Welcome Whiskey Lovers, I'm Big Al and this is Whiskey Straight where I review whiskies from all over the world and give you my thoughts straight up and not watered down. So stay tuned for another taste of Ireland. For review number 42 I'm continuing my Irish start to 2020 with the Red Breast 12 which Red Breast itself says is the regarded as a definitive expression of pot still Irish whiskey. Now it's made from a mash of malted and unmalted barley, triple distilled in copper pot stills, in bourbon season and American oak barrels and sherry butts. Now unlike the rest of the Red Best range, which is bottled at 46% ABV, uh, this entry level weighs in at just 40% ABV. Now I've had quite a few bottles of this over the years, but none for quite a while. So it was a welcome surprise to get this uh, 50 ml bottle here as part of a tray of samples from my mother-in-law at Christmas. So big thank you Yvonne. Anyway, certainly as I was getting into whiskey back in the day, uh, Redbreast 12 was a whiskey that always received rave reviews and rightly so. But there are many new kids in the block to compare to today. So how does it stand? the test of time in an increasingly competitive market. If you've got some of this, pour yourself a wee dram and let's go through it step by step together. After all, whiskey is all about sharing. So let's start off with the nosing. Slauncha. Now, right from the off the arrival is sherry spice, but it's actually more warming than really overtly spicy. Now there's some fruitiness there too, perhaps even a touch of apricot, which, which I don't really like, but it does work here. And there's some nice hints of toast and woodiness in there as well. Now, the fruit's in there. They're not either light or dark, but they're somewhere in between, uh, probably just leaning a wee tad to the darker side. Now it is a nice nose, but not really stunning, just nice. However, it does give off uh, what I would say would be a nice richness that really does kind of belie it's 40% ABV but if you were to put a figure on it right now uh, without knowing you would probably maybe say only around 43% rather than 46 so let's get right on to the palate They're right up in the palate. There's a nice wee initial burst of vanilla, but immediately it's rich. It's extremely creamy. It's it's almost like a sherry cream uh, on the palate. Indeed, even like a bit of a liqueur initially, and then it finishes like a warm, well buttered toast. So very rich and creamy and now I'm getting some lightly toasted almonds just coming in in the back of that much much nicer on the palate than on the nose let's go again lightly toasted oak and then there's a mix between white and milk chocolate. And then a wee tad spicy, like cinnamon on warm oats. And right in there as well, there's, there's a nice subtle hint of brown sugar. So you just think of that nice warming cinnamon and a touch of brown sugar on top of your oats. Oh yeah, very nice indeed. A 
Now the sherry notes there again, but it's mellow. Uh, in fact, this is extremely mellow and but while it's mellow it's still quite clear and um, that nice simmering cinnamon and the light brown sugar does really help to bring it out more to the fore as it develops on the palate. Now on the finish it lingers nicely, it's creamy, it's fruity and very warming across the palate in a very satisfying way with those notes of sherry, toasted oak and some milk chocolate and then which is very nice coming right in at the end there's a touch of vanilla ice cream and it just really does hit the spot very very nicely indeed now to sum up, it's clear to say why this was viewed as the definitive expression of single pot still Irish whisky. It really is an utterly lovely whisky that is without doubt really a no-brainer when it comes to recommending it to anyone at all, even as a starter as an introduction into whisky. It pretty much has everything going for it. Great nosing experience with lots going on, some fantastically complimentary flavours and a really wonderful creamy palate and mouth coating feel. Now it is widely available and usually it can be sourced at around 40 to 45 quid, although the price is creeping up a bit in some places, but given that it's a 12 year old, that's not really too bad when you think about it. So it's Definitely a thumbs up for me, and in terms of a score, I would give it a very solid 87. Now, in terms of Redbreast, you really can't go wrong. For me, it's probably the best range from entry to top level you can get. And I'll be going through the rest of that range soon. So keep an eye out for those upcoming videos by clicking on subscribe and ringing that bell. So thanks for watching, folks. To my regulars. Many thanks for your continued support and to my new subscribers, uh, thanks for joining in my whiskey journey and joining me here in the Whiskey Den and I look forward to sharing many more whiskies with you. So until next time, take care of yourselves, stay safe and you know how it goes by now, drink your whiskey the way you like it. Sláinte